What is HDR video? And how do you create it? HDR video, or high dynamic range video, isn't the same as HDR photography. HDR photography requires the same picture to be taken at two different exposures. Those two pictures are then combined digitally afterwards to give you an HDR result. HDR video captures a broader range of brightness and colour than standard dynamic range, or SDR video, within a single exposure. But how does this work? And is it worth your while? With an SDR image, detail can be seen within a luminance or brightness range of 0 to 100 on a waveform. Any detail in the frame exposed outside of these values will be lost in the recording. SDR video also limits the range of colours that can be recorded. And for decades, the parameters in which all SDR equipment operates has been defined under a standard known as REC 709. For HDR, a new standard was introduced called REC 2020. It permits a much broader range of colour in the recorded image. Most modern cameras have actually been able to see in HDR quality for quite a while. Their image sensors are capable of it. However, the quality of their recordings has been limited by historical standards. Additionally, at the consumer end of the market, these recordings are commonly stored with 8-bit resolution, which is a bottleneck for HDR workflow. Let me explain. If you take a bank of eight on-off switches, you have 256 unique ways in which the whole bank of the switches can be arranged. So eight switches, or eight bits, facilitates 256 unique values, each of which can be used to describe the shade of a single color. The recorded image is made up of red, green, and blue dots, each able to produce 256 different colors. So the total number of color shades that can be recorded is 256 times 256 times 256, or just over 16 million different colors. For a video delivery system, this is enough information. But the minute you start stretching or changing these colors in editing, the image quickly breaks apart as bands of color appear in place of natural smooth gradations. So what has this got to do with HDR? Well, to capture the range of brightness and color required for HDR, the camera must change the way it interprets light. This means using what's known as a log picture profile. The log image straight off the camera looks dull and flat. It has to be color corrected in post-production. With 8-bit video, there's simply not enough information in the recording for it to be corrected in this way. So an HDR workflow requires the camera to record in a log format using at least 10-bit resolution, which is capable of storing over a billion colors. The Panasonic GH5 has been a very popular mirrorless camera for the last three years because it was and remains one of the first to facilitate 10-bit recordings in 4K at up to 30 frames per second and 1080p at up to 60 frames per second internally with a log picture profile. Okay, so what do you need to edit this footage? Well, you're going to need an HDR capable computer monitor and these currently are still very expensive. You'll also need an editing program with the ability to switch to a REC 2020 or HDR standard. You'll need to de-log the image and grade it. And then once it's edited, you'll need to export the film in a format that an HDR capable TV can understand. And here's where we run into a few other new terminologies. There are currently four main competing HDR formats. HDR10 is the basic free open source HDR format that all HDR capable software media players and displays are compatible with. HDR 10 plus adds metadata into the recording. But what's this I hear you cry? Well, all HDR capable TVs differ in their capability. So if you edit your film to look good on the best HDR TV in the world, it won't look so good on less capable ones. The metadata tells the TV how the brightest and darkest parts of the image were mastered in the studio on a scene-by-scene -scene basis, so the TV can more accurately apply what's called tone mapping, which helps it display the content optimally according to its performance characteristics. 
each manufacturer has their own idea of how this tone mapping should be applied. Dolby Vision is both an end-to-end -end system of standards from production to delivery and an advanced dynamic metadata system. Like HDR10+, Dolby Vision helps get the most out of a TV. Except, in the case of Dolby Vision, the tone mapping is controlled by Dolby, based on what they know about the display's characteristics. HLG, or Hybrid Log Gamma, is an interesting twist on HDR that's also backwards compatible with SDR TVs. Cameras like the Panasonic GH5 have an HLG picture profile. It's a neat solution, if a little short of being the ultimate viewing experience. Please subscribe for more film and sound production gear reviews, tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.